Welcome to Manifest Without Money. I have a kitty underneath the table here. And uh, let's see if I can get her up here. You can see her. There she is. This is bad girl because it looks like she's got a mask. <laughs> she won't stay still. So I want to talk to you about what is it that you're expecting in a relationship, out of a relationship? Because whatever you expect, that's exactly what you're going to receive. What does that mean? It means that you can expect good, bad, or indifferent. What sets an expectation, an intention, or a decision? So now we're talking about laws, the laws of agreement or the laws of decision. Many people enter into relationships not knowing what it is they want. Throughout the end of a relationship, they begin to come down with other conclusions or they begin to make new decisions as to, oh, you know what? I think I would like to get married. And that's when you find out that the other person did not want to get married. So the question is, okay, should I tell the person before I start my relationship that I want to get married or not? Well, if you know that's what you want, obviously you would. But in the knowing of what it is you want, in the knowing of what it is you want, you already attract the right person. You see, because when you know what it is you want, it means you have a made up mind. A made up mind means that you have been persisting in those thoughts. That's what I want. That's what I want. That's what I'm looking for. It means the more you think of something, the law of perpetual transmutation states, the more you think about that, that will come to reality. So I want to talk to you today about when a relationship breaks apart. If I am the creator of my own reality, when a relationship breaks apart and you're the one making the decision that you don't want to be in the relationship, but then you end up feeling like a victim or you have mixed feelings and emotions, and then you begin to enter into, did I do the right decision? Did I make the right decision? Everything starts with decision while you think you made a decision to break away from them remember that's also a new beginning in the saying hey listen i don't want to be with you because it's evident you don't want to be married but i do while you're stuck in a relationship you also made a decision you intend now for a different outcome here's what happened i have a client and she decided to break up with her um, her boyfriend. And in the breakup, in the process, or right at the end of the relationship, because she's within my program, I was mentoring and coaching her because now she has mixed feelings and emotions and everybody does. So think of it this way. When the person that breaks up with you when they break up with you, I want to show you that their side of the story, their mind, and then what happens in, to the one that's been broken up with. You see, when, when my client made the decision and said, okay, listen, I've been trying to reach out to you. This was a long distance relationship. I've been trying to reach out to you so we can get down and talk about some things, but it's evident that you're not responding. Um, so guess what? I've made a decision um, that there's no communication here. Um, you did ask me two weeks ago what it is that I want from this relationship, and I, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Well, I would like to be married, but apparently you're not picking up the conversation, so I've decided that I don't want to be here. I'm letting go and I'm moving on. His response was, okay, that's fine. I wish you the best. It triggered in her a mix of feelings and emotions. You see, because through the end of the relationship, she began to come up with new decisions, meaning she began to look at the relationship and realize that it was lingering and there was nothing there. And so a new desire was born within her to take it to the next level. Ultimately, she wanted marriage. Now, I asked her and I said, well, why is it that you wanted marriage? 
we try to come down to understand that what she was looking for was not necessarily marriage, was looking for trust and a deep connection. So we take deep connection and we make it equal to marriage because we think marriage is a forever thing, things are settled, I don't have to worry anymore, right? You're looking for that full deep acceptance. So now she understands that marriage not, is not necessarily the answer or what she was looking for. She was actually looking for a deep connection. So now we backed everything up. All right, why is it that you did not find a deep connection within the marriage and within the relationship? And what we came to find out was that the reason there was not a deep connection there, it's because there was no communication. Communication means to speak. You speak from the mind. Therefore, and this was a long distance, therefore their words um, came from what they were thinking. If there's no deep connection, if there's no conversation of a deep level, neither one of the parties were, were thinking on a deep level. What does it mean to think on a deep level? To think on a deep level, it means to involve the heart. It means that you're not on the level surface mind where you're just boyfriend and girlfriend and you're just having a sexual relationship. It means that it goes deeper than that. It, it goes into the heart. It involves the heart. Well, what does it mean to involve the heart? It means that you have feelings, feelings turn into emotions and there's a result. So her results today started from her thoughts. And as we begin to analyze everything, I said, if there's no deep connection, deep connection also symbolizes, or it should tell you, deep connections means feeling and emotions or actions. I said, if there was no deep connection, it's because you on the level mind, on the conscious level mind, you have not allowed yourself to get there. I said, everything is a projection of you. You have not allowed yourself to see yourself. You see, you must create an image and it's the image that creates the feeling, which means the image goes into the heart. I said, did you take the time to think of him as being the one for you? Ultimately, the right guy. She began to open up her heart now, meaning she was sharing with me what was in her mind all this time. Because it's not about looking at him or the circumstances, it's about looking back at you. So we began to analyze everything and she came down with this awareness, looking at the landscape of the relationship, that she was in and out, in and out, in and out. In her emotional state, in her heart, she was in and out, in and out. So she was on a roller coaster. Meaning she was looking, she was scanning through her conscious mind, her ego was scanning through her conscious mind and she began to divide and separate. He doesn't have this, he's depressed. She does, okay, it's not she. He wasn't doing this or he's not doing that. She was looking for what's not there. She was looking for the lack of those things. In the lack of things, it automatically told her what she wanted. In the lack of, the lack also comes with the answer. She received her answer. That's why she said, well, I want to have be married now. It's because she kept looking for something that wasn't there. So she, Towards the end of the relationship, she became more aware. Well, what I want is obviously marriage equal deep connection. So she looked at him throughout the relationship looking for that deep connection. And deep connection comes in the form of sitting down and talking about the future, right? You have a vision. Without a vision, you perish. So she was looking to create a vision in her mind of him and her together, but there was no communication back and forth from either one of them. And so she came down to create a new vision at the end. Well, I want to be married, but it's obvious that all throughout this relationship, I couldn't put myself and him together as seeing ourselves married. Therefore, I'm the one that said, no, I don't want to be here. So ultimately it comes down to us, to me. I helped her to understand you came down with this conclusion because obviously you became more clear as to what it is you wanted. Yes, but why did he respond okay? Why didn't he fight for me? I said, he cannot fight because you came down with a conclusion and your mind was made up that he's not the right one for you. And the way you made up your mind that he's not the right one for you, it's because you have kept looking at what he's not there. 
or what's not in him. The lack brought lack. You rejected him, therefore he rejected you. You see, everything is a mirror. In the rejection of him, you rejected you. And I said, right now, if you want to go back with him, it's because you just need them and you want them to fill in the void. And I said, this is a pattern that we take from relationship to relationship. We start with lack and void. We end up with lack and void and we take lack and void. What it means? It means that you always look at what's not there. You're always looking at the negative. You're not looking at the positive. Could it have been that there was something in him that you have could have taken the relationship and guided towards being married? Most likely. But you've had the habit of looking what's not there, meaning you were expecting to see in him something that's not. So when, to expect something from him is to already make, make, make up your mind that it's not there. Meaning, this is what I expect out of him. First starts with intention and then expectation. And if you look in your mind and you're scanning for that expectation of him as if you would have wanted him to be that kind of a person already, it means that he's not that person from the beginning. You cannot expect something that you don't intend. I hope it makes sense. Meaning your own expectation of him tells him that you don't see that in him already. Because to intend is to expect. The beginning and the end are all in together. So when you expect something and you say it's not there, it's because you did not see it there to begin with. And that way you rejected them. We should not have expectations because when we have expectations, it says it's not there. Meaning, I'm not seeing it in a physical way. You're not that kind of a person because I don't see it here. But yet I, I keep expecting it. So you cannot expect something that you don't create. Meaning, you cannot expect him to be that kind of a person if you did not see that intention or saw yourself with him or saw him in that way but yet you in the physical you expect it i hope this makes sense so while you're expecting him to be that kind of a person you can only expect that that what you create it starts with the intention so if you continue to expect and you don't see it in your reality it's because it wasn't there to begin with in you you did not see that in him so now you say, well, I expected it and it's not happening. Yes, because you did not see yourself with them there. So ultimately, everything comes back with ima to imagination, our thoughts and imagination. Without a vision, you perish. Without a vision, that means you keep expecting, but it's never going to come. Because the vision implies that you see it now, and therefore it will happen. But if it did not happen for you to be with them, it's because to begin with, you did not have a vision. You did not see the best in him. You did not see him as the ideal partner. But you continue to expect. You're hoping maybe that he would sit down and talk to you. It, he can't because he's a projection of you. It's only when you change your mind. You change your mind, they change their mind. And now we're talking about, okay, can I attract an SP back? Well, let's see. Do you want them back because you're lonely and alone? You're coming from a place of lack once again. You're looking at your pattern and you say, I always break my relationships apart. I never can hold a relationship. That means you're expecting something that you're not creating. You did not conceive them to be that person, meaning you did not see them as the ideal partner. If you don't see them that way, don't expect them to be that way because you create them. So can you attract someone back? Yes. Are you willing to put in the work or what's the work? Start with the intention. Start to conceive them. What that means is connect back with them Hook up to a vine, connect back to his heart, go back into the memory and do you remember a time when he, you really felt like there was love between the two of you? Now you feed that vine. That means take that little bit, take that little flame and keep building it up. Add more thoughts, begin to build the image, the ideal image of you and him. As you begin to build the idea, the, the vision of you and him, something happens within you. Your heart begins to open up, right? Because your thoughts create a bigger picture, and the bigger picture, the bigger it is, the more you amplify, the more the heart opens up. It receives the picture now, and guess what? Just by you creating the images, they're being imprinted on his mind. The reason he said no to you right away in three minutes, it's because there was no 
image in his mind. And then we went as far as saying, you're right. He kept asking me, do you love me? Do you love me? I said, he was not looking, he was looking for confirmation. I said, what he was looking for was that image in you and he couldn't see it. And if the image was not in you, obviously it was in your body language and your body language was giving out a vibe that you weren't loving him. And she said, you're right. I always, I was always in and out, in and out. I didn't know if I was going to be with him or not. I felt like we're just dragging things along. I said, he just reflected that all the time. And he was sensitive enough, right, to reflect it back to you by asking you, do you love me? Because he felt you're not. You're not always there. It showed through the way you were talking, through the way you were behaving. Maybe you were around him or not. He felt the resistance in you, the rejection. And I said, now you feel rejected, even though you initiated the breakup. I said, you rejected yourself. In the process of rejecting him, rejecting him you rejected you because he's just a mirror of you. You reject that mirror. That means you, you rejected yourself. And so he had to show it. Like here it is a rejection. So now it should cause us to think what does it mean I rejected myself? It means you rejected to see the good in you and the good in him. You rejected to create what was not there, you, but yet you expected it. To expect it without creators to demand. And you can't demand it. That's called control. And you must create in order to receive. You must conceive in order to have a baby. So can we go back now and think about, okay, well, I want to attract him back. The question is, well, how can I bring him back? Don't rush into bringing anybody back. You must understand yourself now. You must enter into self-development. And that's why we put the program together. It's deeper than just learning how to manifest or how the law of attraction works. The program, Manifest Without Money, takes you through the module of identity, relationship. Um, no, it's identity, money, relationship, and health. It's breaking you apart and putting you back together. So it becomes the foundation for life. It's not just a one-time thing. I need a Band-Aid, let me put it on. Let me use the law of attraction. Let me listen to this video. I'll put the Band-Aid on and I'll run a little bit with this Band-Aid until it falls off and I watch another video and put another Band-Aid on. It's a matter of developing you. So the program Manifest Without Money, it's a self-development program. You, the self, which is the six tools of mind and the laws of the universe are developing your awareness. You understand you, you enter into the mastery of you. And when you enter into the mastery of you, guess what happens? Nobody can master you. So the program is meant to bring into that power and authority and mastery over your life, which is the seventh level of awareness. There is no other level above that, meaning nobody can be above you anymore. You begin to recognize how people communicate with you and you can know if they're thinking, if they're feeling, if this is an action and what's happening with them. What level of awareness are they at between level one and seven? So not only you're going to build better relationships when you understand yourself and you develop yourself, but you are not going to be on a roller coaster. You're not going to be in and out of a relationship. You are not going to question and doubt your decisions. You are going to make them from a balanced mind and heart, from the unity of the conscious and the subconscious. Um, you begin to recognize why is it that you keep changing your mind, for example, in a relationship. Why are you on a roller coaster? Or why is it that you come up the, with these decisions? Are, did, are they because of compulsion or was it a predetermined decision and where did that come from and what originated that and now you know what's going on with you and when you know what's going on with you you are going to understand what's going on with them in fact now you have the upper hand because you develop or you you've been developing yourself and I encourage those that are going through breakups or they want the RSP back to get within the program because it will help you to figure you out and it will help you figure them out. You're not going to go through questioning. I wonder what they're thinking. They're thinking what you're thinking because your thoughts are being projected on their mind. Remember the reason you feel rejected now, even though you made the decision to break away, it's because you rejected yourself to see yourself with them. You rejected to see him with you. You rejected to see you with him. 
And the honest truth is that she acknowledged and she said, I really didn't see myself with him other than in a sexual way. I said, well, that's not enough because the relationship is not just based on a sexual way. It shows you now why you think the relationship was only about sex. It was exactly what you thought about that it was. As a man thinks, so it is. So if you thought it was about sex, it was about sex for you. And your thoughts dominated the relationship because you are born aware. And not only that, but the question of my client was, okay, but if she, if he immediately communicated to me back and said, okay, that's fine, um, I wish you the best. She said, it seemed as if he was waiting, like he was waiting for me to initiate the breakup. And then we had to go back and we have to look at everything. And I said, well, let's see. Let's see what you were thinking. Were you thinking about the breakup? She said, not necessarily. I said, well, what were you thinking? Well, I was thinking if he's the right one for me. I was also thinking, um, I was doubting. I was beginning to be jealous. I was beginning to think, um, well, there's a difference in our age. I was beginning to think about um, what if he doesn't see me beautiful? What if he doesn't see me good enough? And I said, you see what you were doing, you were building up towards this. Again, your thoughts were doing that. You were thinking for him that you may not be good. You were, you were, you were judging you. In essence, you were judging you out of the relationship. Uh, you made him better and put him on a pedestal without you even knowing, truly knowing him. And so, again, obviously, that's the reason why she said, you know what, I want to be married. What she was saying is, I want a deeper connection. There was no communication between the two of them. And when there's no communication to this level of um, no one wants in each other's heart, ultimately one of them makes a decision and says, I just want out, right? Why wasn't there a deep connection? Um, because you can't create something meaningful or you cannot expect something meaningful if you don't create it. Meaning if you did not start in the relationship with the intention to have a meaningful relationship, and he just started in it just because I said, now you came to the awareness that, hey, having a deep, meaningful relationship and conversation and even being married, right? It enters into your awareness. You're growing, you're developing, which is okay. But what if I just want to marry him? So there's many questions that you can look at. Well, what if I decided I want to marry him? What if I want to bring my SP back? And that's another thing. Do you want to be in a relationship? Do you want to be treated as a girlfriend and boyfriend? For how long? What's the ultimatum towards the end? Are you thinking of marriage? What does marriage mean to you? Are you wanting marriage because you're lacking something? You're lacking the security and confidence in you? Or are you wanting a deep connection? And so we need to not label those, but we need to figure ourselves out. So the client, obviously, she thought, well, I want marriage because I also want security, financial security, which is a normal thing when it comes for women. But what you're saying is I'm not potential or I'm not taking ability of my, or I'm not taking responsibility, which means I'm not responding according to my ability. I don't think I'm able, so therefore I cannot be, I cannot respond. Um, meaning I'm not able enough I don't trust in my ability to respond to other people's needs out there, right? With my ability, I meet other people's needs. I give them what they need and I get what I want. And so what you're saying is I'm insecure in my ability. That's why I'm not taking responsibility. That's why I want to be married because I want a man to take care of me. So obviously it comes down to another pattern of identity. What you think about you. It comes back to you considering yourself being weak or not being strong enough. We're not being good enough. And that's what we talk about in the identity module to begin with. That's where you build your identity because if you wait for someone else on the outside to always take care of you, it's never going to happen. You go back into the same cycle. And so the program is not meant to teach you the law of attraction. The program is meant to break you apart and then put you back together. Meaning to show you what's inside of you, the, the patterns, the paradigms, we dissolve those, we break them apart, we create new paradigms or new beliefs, and then you have another level of awareness as to the dynamic between relationships or you and your clients in business. Meaning you get into the upper hand. 
you take control over the business transactions, you understand your client better, the benefits out of the program are immense. Again, it's not just about the law of attraction because you can't sit back home and money shows up in business. You've got to know how to develop yourself um, in order to have a better business and turn your annual revenue into monthly revenue. So it has to do with self-development and that's what this program does. It helps you in all areas of life and all relationships. So ultimately, as you can see, when you go through relationships, when you're in a relationship, the bottom line is this, everything points back at you. Everything points back at you. You must think about what is it that you've been thinking about. It's not a matter of looking at them. It's not a matter of looking at the text, their picture, and begin to linger and to long and to desire and to want. It ultimately comes back to your thinking. Your thinking creates the feeling, feeling creates the action, and the action creates the result. And uh, ultimately, we also have to distinguish between the ego and the heart, or the conscious and the subconscious. Was your decision a consciously made decision? And people say, well, it is a conscious decision. Have you checked with your heart? And if she says, yes, I've checked with my heart, my mind's made up. Sometimes, once again, the reason you say, yes, I made the decision, it comes from the heart. What you're saying is, I don't want to be with them. Ultimately, it leads you to the place where you never saw yourself with them. And the question is, why? Is it because you have a pattern that you're better than they are, or you're not good enough for them? It comes back to identity and self-esteem, self-image. It all comes back to you. No matter where you go, it comes back to you. Why is it that you did not allow yourself to see yourself with them? What's there? What's the problem? Because the problem is not in them. The problem is in you. Why is it that you couldn't see yourself with them? And uh, could it be that you're in self-judgment? Could it be that, again, you expected them to be someone that you have not even created them to be with? But, Luminina, wait, you told me that I attracted them. Yes, you attracted them at the level of awareness you were at the time. But if you did not develop yourself through the relationship, meaning if you did not know that everything starts with a thought and it ends up in a circumstance, you don't know you, you did not develop you, you couldn't develop the relationship. So you're just, you know, in and out of the relationship without actually creating it. Because you can create while you're in the relationship. And now you made a decision, well, I want to create something new. I just want to be married. I said, that means you just want to have a deep, meaningful relationship. And it all again starts with you. You must ask yourself, what does that look like? Um, does it look like I would have to communicate with him at all times? We would talk. We would talk about the future. We would begin to build images and visions of the future together. Yes, and that's what it means. You develop a deep, meaningful relationship when you develop your thinking. To develop your thinking is to expand it. You begin to think more than just boyfriend and girlfriend. You know. So ultimately, she made the right decision. Um, and even if she decides to go back and um, change the situation, now we can talk about how do you attract an SP back. Um, there's ways to attract your SP back. As you already know, if you've attracted the rejection, you can attract the acceptance. So the way you would see that, obviously, you would have to develop those pictures of having him. Allowing yourself to see yourself in other ways other than just being in bed. Allowing yourself to see him or see in him something that you didn't see before. What it means is that you conceive them. You conceive them now. You create them. Are you willing to create? Are you willing to drop the seed? Are you willing to go through the process of pregnancy? Are you willing to give birth to that? Are you willing to do all of that? Many people are not. And so that's when you should ask yourself, okay, why do I really want my SP back? Ask yourself, why do I want my SP back? Is it coming from need and want? Need and want resembles and it shows you that you're lacking you're lacking them. You're already lacking them. You don't have them. And if you don't have them, are you willing to conceive them? Are you willing to put in the work? 
Are you willing to think, to speak and imagine everything in an alignment? Or are you going to find yourself, well, how can I imagine him being that way? Because he said that. Are you willing to go through this work of shaping yourself? Of being able to have a, a tunnel vision? A tunnel vision, a vision that you only look in there. Or are you going to allow circumstances to attack you? Past conversations, past thoughts, past imageries. Are you willing to break through all of those? Are you willing to shut off the circumstances that only look at your desire? Tunnel vision, only look at your desire. Are you allowing your vision or your desire to speak to you only? And if you can't see that desire within you, if you cannot even create that vision, and you just feel almost repelled, then he's not the one for you. But if you feel like there's something there, right? There's the vine, the little flicker is still there, the little fire is still burning. Then allow your heart to be broken. Allow your heart to, to acknowledge that. Because you need that. A lot of people, when they break up, their heart is breaking. What's happening is you begin to open yourself up towards you. You accept you and you must accept what just happened. And you also must accept that you've caused the rejection and the separation. And so that's hard. That's why people break apart. Their heart is breaking. It's opening up. It's Things are coming out to the surface so that you can work on them. They're not coming to condemn you. They're not coming there to shame you. They're not coming there to make you anxious and depressed and lonely. They're coming there for you to fix them. That means to fix yourself, to develop yourself, to like, hey, get to know you. Get to know not not what it is only what you want, but getting to know how you operate, your energy in a body. Get to know how this energy operates. Get to understand the tools in the conscious mind. Get to understand the laws of this energy. That's what it's saying. Come to the source. Come to get to know you. All right? So that's the meaning of the program. It's deeper than how do I get my SP back? It almost sounds like a Band-Aid. Let's just use the Band-Aid. No. No. The way you perform in one area of life, you perform in the others because it's the same mind. So if you're stuck in a relationship or money is not working out or a relationship is not working out, ultimately it comes back to you. You keep rejecting, you're rejecting the money, you reject the people because it's not there. In the looking of what's not there, you reject it. In the looking and you say it's not there, it's because you don't see yourself with it. Because when you see yourself with it, it's like, it's there, it's there, but it's there. And this is now when you understand that images are very powerful. Images turn to reality. That's why it's very powerful for us to think and be careful what we think because those thoughts create images. And those images are going to come to us. The same way you're looking and you can't find in the mind... What am I going to put this guy in? Do I even see myself with him? And they're like, I don't know. He doesn't have this. You keep talking about lack. You're not creating the picture. So if it's not a picture, it's not coming out. It's not coming out. It's not a photocopy. It's not a carbon copy of that. Because if it's nothing there and you say, well, he's not like this and he's not like that. Instead of you saying, he's not like this, but I would like him to be like that. And you conceive him. You build a picture. If you're not building a picture, you can't see it out here. So you rejected you. And therefore he mirrored it back. I hope it makes sense. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all of you. Like, share, subscribe. Come and check out Manifest Without Money. And um, come to Facebook, um, the Facebook page as well. We're actually starting a 21-day challenge on the law of agreement or the law of decision. As you can see, when you make a decision to end something, something also begins. Because in the process of saying no, right, I say no to this, you're also replacing the other side of the sentence or idea with what it is you want. I don't want to be here in this relationship because I want to be married. You're stopping something, you're ending something, and you're beginning a new cycle. So the power of decision or the law of decision is very powerful because what it says is when you make a decision, your decision travels into the past and into the future simultaneously. It begins to connect with the people that are vibrating in alignment with what decision you've made. So that's why guys are going to come into your relationship right now that are actually looking to be married. Because when you made that decision, that was a demand. You put a demand on the universe. So when you make a decision, you put a demand on the universe. And if you vibrate in this state and you begin to develop pictures of what marriage looks like to you, those guys 
are going to come according to those pictures. So now we can talk about why is it that this guy came into my life? I know I called him in, but if he's not your ideal of the image you want, it should tell you, I need to keep building the picture, keep building the picture, keep building and perfecting the picture, that image, because as you begin to perfect the image of the ideal marriage, the ideal guy is going to come. First of all, you might not get, you might just get a guy that has a thought about being married. Then you, as your thought develops, you build the picture, another guy comes until you perfect that picture. And when you perfect that picture, the perfect guy is going to show up. Why? Because you vibrate at the same level. So your identity is in your hands. Your identity is in your hands. Your identity of your own self and of the marriage is all in your hands. You create everything. So if you don't like this guy right now, what you're saying is, you know what? I don't know who I am. I have not developed a picture. I don't have an identity. My own identity is broken. Therefore, I got to build my old identity. And that's in first module in the program. Then you go into the relationships and that's when you build another model. So you develop yourself, perfect the image. And as you perfect the image, the perfect guy shows up that fits the picture of your image. I hope this makes sense. That's the benefit of being within a program because you've got something to do every single day. There's a video that you must, you must watch every single week and then every single day you do exercises. Not once a day, a couple of times a day with the purpose to build a foundation inside of you of how you operate. So you're never out of balance. You're never on a roller coaster. All right, so thank you so much for watching. I'm looking forward to seeing you within the program. And whenever you make that decision, know that when you make, remember, when you make a decision to be within the program, you're going to receive what it is you need out of the program, okay? That's the law of decision. When you make a decision to be in something, it's because that thing, that program has exactly what you need. It's going to serve you. So it's not a spending of money. It's also an investment of money. And I said also, but it's not. It's an investment. It's going to bring you the answers. It's going to raise you to that desire you want of you. Okay, so if you want to build a new identity, if you want to build a new identity, a relationship identity, if you want to build a new identity with money, if you want to build a new identity of health, then this program is for you. Okay, thank you so much for watching. With much gratitude, this is Luminita. Bye.